his ancient people. A Jewish boy shows passion and a gift for learning into the Torah. He's singled out. Undoubtedly, he, he dreams of becoming a, a great rabbi. And he's sent to Jerusalem to learn at the feet of the great rabbis. And there his giftedness, his passion for God's word places him ahead of all the other rabbinical students. And he hears of a movement he believes is heretical. He decides in his zeal to stamp it out. He's violent. He'll stamp it out. He's brilliant but violent. And he persecutes them, goes on a mission to destroy them. And on the way, a light from heaven strikes him. He falls to the earth, blinded, and God says, Saul, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? And God will send another Messianic believer, Jewish believer, to go to him, say to this man who persecuted the believers, the man doesn't even want to go because he's scared of Paul, Saul. But then he goes, he says, no, God says, he is, this, this persecutor is a chosen vessel of mine. He's a chosen vessel for me to bear my name before the nations, the Gentiles, and before kings and before the children of Israel. The man, Shaul, known also as Paulos or Paul, realizes his entire life leading up to even his persecution. All of it was leading up to an appointed destiny that God had when he was in his mother's womb. Paul said, God separated me from back then. His fighting spirit, his zeal for the word, his studying under the great rabbis, his coming at the exact time right after Messiah, the gospel had come. It was all to prepare him to become the apostle to the world, to write the word of God with, a, with, with all that he learned from the rabbis and all that he learned of the word and his zeal. It was all to prepare him to be an apostle, to give the word to not only his generation, but to us, millions and billions of people. All He had no idea he was all doing that for that. He had no idea. He had his own plan. He thought it was for that. But God was doing it for his plan. Amen. And what he thought was the goal was just a step in the plan. He had no idea. It was his appointed destiny. And it wasn't that God called Saul to become an apostle because he was prepared with all his studies in the word. It was that Saul had been prepared with all his studies in the world because God had called him to be an apostle. It wasn't that God called the disciples to become fishers of men because they were fishers of fish. It was that they were fishers of fish because God had already ordained them to be fishers of men. And it wasn't that God called David to be the shepherd of Israel because he was a shepherd of sheep. He called, David was a shepherd of sheep because he was called to be the shepherd of Israel. It's that deep, the appointed destiny of God. And the same God of Joseph, of Moses, of Josiah, of Paul is alive today and is our God lives with us, is for us. We too have an appointed destiny. My wife, Renata, grew up in Brazil. And when she was a teenager, a believer prophesied over her. And sometime later, another believer prophesied over her and another and another. And they all said the same thing. They said, there's a man across the world. He's Jewish. He's from the tribe of Levi. He ministers around the world. He sounds the shofar. You are to prepare yourself to be his wife, his helpmate. Renata began studying how the Levites, as a teenager, how the Levites assisted the priests in ministry because of that prophecy. She had lineage from the line of Levi, I was born of the house of Aaron. She was preparing without knowing. Years passed. She saw nothing. She ended up in America. She asked for a friend. Can you take me to a Messianic congregation? I miss going there. Her friend happened to be someone who went to Beth Israel, who was from Brazil. One of the prophecies said, as soon as you see him, you'll know it's him. Now, I wasn't on stage, but I was walking around. You wouldn't know I was anything. She turned to her friend. She said, who is that guy? She said, he's been to Brazil because I've seen him before. She said, no, you, he's never been. She said, then how come I know him? Now, all those years, I was dealing with women in the congregation and from the radio program who each received from heaven a direct revelation that they were each to be my wife. <laughs> Amazing. 
confirmation, they all had the same vision. Some had bought wedding dresses, you know. So I became cautious. I kind of gave up. But I had no idea that across the world there was a woman from Brazil who had already been given a prophetic word, and she would never, ever tell me that word. I discovered it elsewhere that it was already destined. We didn't plan the date of our wedding to be that date, but the, the, the Parsha, the appointed, the appointed reading for that day that's in the, in the synagogues all across the world that's from the Torah, we didn't plan it was about the Le when the Levites were presented to the sons of Aaron to help them in ministry. I know the plans I have for you. When I came to the Lord, I was in college. I worked at night. I was a watchman. I wasn't planning uh, anything. I didn't know what the Lord had. But they sent me to watch over this building that was kind of on a backwater street, a building that happened to be ne next door to that building on this street that was just out of the way, happened to be the building of the American Board of Mission to the Jews, the central agency of sending the gospel to the Jewish people. They're the ones that started Jews for Jesus, and chosen people became that. This little building right next door to where God stationed me. It just so happened for that little season of time, they moved their headquarters to that little, that place right next to where I was the watchman. I'm next door. And I get saved independently from that. And every day I'd see the sign that said American Board of Mission. I said, that's interesting. Never bothered to check it out. I was even, you know, it, it, it was right there every single day of my life while I was in college. Meanwhile, next door in that building, a Jewish man had come to the Lord and was going there to get taught about Jesus, being a disciple, about the Messiah. And they had a little Bible study, about eight people. And he prays, Lord, bring a Jewish believer to us. Bring a Jewish believer. And I'm next door every day, but never going there. In fact, that, in fact, where I was, they actually expanded into that other building. And then I was actually patrolling that building. But I never bothered to step in. I'm at a church meeting in New, in New Jersey about a half an hour south of where this was, and I meet a believing woman who just happened to be in the area for that weekend, and we're talking, and she's, oh, you're Jewish. I know a Messianic congregation that's starting. So here's the phone number. She writes it down. I decide to call it. I call it. I speak to the guy who's leading it. He gives me directions. I follow the directions, not knowing that it's leading me through a different route to the very place where I work every day to that building. I had to go to New Jersey to go next door. So finally, I go there, and the man who had been praying for a Jewish man, the one who was a new Jewish believer, a Jewish man to come, a Jewish believer, being a disciple, introduces me. His name is Gary Selman. That's where he was discipled. We were next door to each other for a year, and I wouldn't go there until God made it happen. And that's how I met this.